Let's talk about tech enthusiasm plans for 2024. And I am going to break this into two videos. One of them kind of focused on the living room and one of them focused on the home theater. We're going to talk about the home theater in this one. And basically the six kind of major things, major themes that I think I'm after uh, in some capacity or another as we go into and through 2024. 2023 was really a banner year. Uh, for the Tech Enthusiasm Home Theater. Check out the latest, the last uh, final tour videos for all of the, <clears throat> for all the latest information and, and state and kind of structure of the home theater. But suffice to say, did a lot in 2023. Chairs, AVM90, more subwoofers, NAD amplifiers, and so on. Very much an audio year. And so that kind of also influences maybe 2024, thinking of it as a little more of a video year. All right, so six things that I would have in my mind. Number one, uh, I will I will absolutely instant instant day one pre-order uh, purchase any new model Apple TV that comes to market. I think we will probably see another Apple TV in 2024. I think they'll keep pushing the power. It'll have been long enough since the current model that we have in our systems right now. And for, again, the price of 100 to maybe 100, 100 to 200 dollars or so, it's a no-brainer, it's an instant buy. I love the Kaleidoscape for movies, but the Apple TV is utility for literally everything else that I watch and that I do um, in both of my zones, including the home theater. So at new Apple TV unit, always and immediately an instant buy. I'm not sure what they might do with it. We'll see. It could be an interesting year. Will they push the gaming prowess of the system? Will they push the power? You know, what other kind of features and things might we get that are enabled specifically by or within a hardware revision? to be determined. Uh, but I'm hopeful and excited to see what we might get. Number two, this one actually is an audio one, but because at the time I'm recording this, the, the option is still hanging out there. I am running four subwoofers in the Techthusiasm home theater. There's two SB16 Ultras from SVS up front. There are two Arundel Sound 1723 2Ss in the back. Um, I've made note on the channel a number of times, the Arundels are up for sale. Uh, my preference will be to go ahead and settle for the foreseeable future on quad SB16s uh, for a couple reasons that I'll get into specifically coming up in some review videos and whatnot. Uh, but if I can make the sale and make the numbers kind of uh, uh, correlate enough that I can work with SBS as a partner, pull this switch, and make everything uh, happen as I'm hoping that it might, then I will happily sell the Arundels and kind of side grade the room. It's not, I wouldn't really even call it an upgrade in many senses of the word. It's kind of just a side grade, kind of doing that just because I want to do that. I like the consistency of it. And I do like a couple of the features, design elements and structural elements of the SVS is a little bit better. So all I'm waiting for is a good local buyer to sweep over here, box these iron dolls up, take them away, place an order for another couple of, SB, of SVS SB16s and I'll be good to go. I would imagine that will be a pretty easy one effectively to pull off. It's just a matter of waiting for the buyer and having the numbers line up. And if it doesn't happen, oh, so what? It doesn't happen. I'll just continue running the two sets of subwoofers if I have, as I have them very happily and be good to go either way. Number three, video processor. So in 2023, I was able to get my hands on a Lumigen for a period of time. I really, really enjoyed all of the things that it did and automated within my system. No more lens memory, manual zoomings, and all of that. I could take full advantage uh, of my screen basically all the time, easily without interventions and extra actions. I very much appreciated those features, and I would like to have that consistently uh, going forward. Now, Lumigen versus Mad VR. I'll say things are, I've got conversations and, and collaborative discussion going on uh, in both camps. Of course, I already uh, establish some, uh, as we know, on the channel for the Lumigen. I've got some conversation hopefully going on around the Mad VR. I want to have something that I permanently have in my system and that I own. I would really love, though, to be able to try out both sides uh, regardless before maybe fully committing to something or another, uh, depending on how I go about buying something. The cost differential will also play a big factor ultimately in what I end up with. Um, in some respects, though, I think ultimately I, I would be happy either way. The Mad VR kind of brings in a, a more whiz-bangy type features to play around and experiment with. 
but the Lumagen is a workhorse. Uh, it would I, I would be able to work with my channel friends uh, that you've seen here in live streams and other places. We'd get the Lumagen all set up. It would be programmed and good to go and just sit in the rack and do its thing. And, and so ultimately I would be happy either way. Sometime in 2024, uh, I want to have this kind of settled for myself, settled for my system, have something in there consistently going forward, regardless of what, uh, what else happens kind of around the video setup of the system. So I'm putting this at number three because I would actually intend to prioritize this even over uh, projector upgrades, actually. And, and just get, it's, it's kind of the one, one and only major missing element, I think, of my theater setup, my theater room now. I've got the chairs, I've got, I've got all the speakers I need, I got all the subwoofers I need, I've got my audio stuff upgraded. I still have a great projector, the NX7 is still an awesome, awesome unit, still doing plenty of good work in my system. I've got the Kaleidoscape, I've got an Apple TV, I've got gaming platforms. The one category of device that I don't have is the video processor. And so that, that needs to be resolved. I've got the shelf, it's sitting right here. When I remapped everything and I put in the NAD amplifiers, I left the space, plenty of height as well in case there is something taller versus slimmer that ends up there, but I'm ready to go and I need to settle this for the, for the, for the home theater. We'll see what happens, stay tuned. This is a segment of device and an element of home theater that I, I look very much forward to talking about a lot more with firsthand experience in 2024. Backing that up then, of course, number four is the projector itself. I do expect that at Cedia 2024, we will see new projector announcements. Maybe we'll get them all. Maybe we'll get new JVCs, new Sonys, and new Epsons. That would be pretty awesome, I think. And then we can really all start debating about, okay, is JVC still the king? Is Epson still an incredible value? Is Epson going to nip up uh, against JVC and Sony and challenge them even more with new models? I think it will be a very, very exciting Cedia for video. So my ultimate plan would be to just sit tight with the NX7. The further we get into the year without doing any other type of projector swap, the less valuable an interim projector swap becomes because I would just be basically losing more money out of pocket. Even at this point right now, I'm just better off sitting on the NX7 until the successor models or whatever it may be, the new generation models from all these manufacturers are announced. Pick the one that I can go after, hopefully bank up a whole bunch of Techthusiasm money all through 2024 potentially, and then drop it even on a big boy NZ9 uh, successor model or something along those lines. That's the better play. It's the smarter financial play. And so that, that's where my mind is at on that. And again, if I come out of 2024 potentially with my system, my home theater, having a video processor and a flagship model projector from JVC or whoever, I'll be sitting pretty. Much as I've, I feel in many ways I've got some end game audio level achieved here, that's the end game video level that I'm hoping to get. And if I can accomplish it all in one calendar year, hey, all, all the more awesome if we can get there. So it may be a little bit of a boring road uh, uh, to get to that point, nine months until Cedia, nine months of waiting, so be it, and ultimately, the better decision is still the better decision. And sometimes in this hobby, it actually pays and it's worthwhile to have and exercise some patience. Uh, number five, and I'm putting this down at number five. I'm, I'm kind of doing these in order of either like realistic expectation or priority of focus. Uh, but for number five, I have to mention Kaleidoscape. Um, I'm a big fan, of course, <laughs> as you know, uh, in the channel, been a Kaleidoscape customer for a number of years. I have a big old movie library in the Kaleidoscape platform. I'm rocking my Strato C in a 12 terabyte uh, compact Terra, not a Prime. I don't feel a whole major draw, quite honestly, to spend a bunch of money just to change out a compact Terra for a Prime. 12 terabytes, I think, ultimately is 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 a lot of storage for us. 200 movies, give or take, and we get 12 minute downloads on this unit with our internet service. I feel I'm sitting pretty still with that. But what I'm really interested to see is, and what I'm, I'm kind of expecting is that 2024 for Kaleidoscape should be, it should be uh, the year of, of a new Strato player generation. And I think what can happen with the Strato based on what they did with the Primes and, and what is just generally possible 
you know, what we could conceive of, the types of features and capabilities that could be in a new Strato or a whole new generation Strato lineup. There could be some really, really cool stuff there. I can, I, I, that's definitely on my list of consideration. Debating what those features and what that new Strato player may be, I, I still think there's a possibility. There's, there's still a possibility that what, what the new Strato is designed for and maybe where its strengths may lie may not fundamentally change the experience versus using an existing Strato C, particularly in a home theater environment versus what it may be able to do or that new model may be, may be able to do either in isolation or in a living room or something like that. So I am putting the Kaleidoscape, as much as I like the platform, I am putting the Kaleidoscape uh, idea here down um, at number five right now, just on my kind of gut feeling of what the possibilities are. Of course, if something is announced and if it comes out earlier in the year rather than later, and it's really awesome and it surprises and delights me with all these features and capabilities and new things, that I would be able to take advantage of in the theater, then we may see some of these priorities potentially shift around. Um, I could see it maybe bumping up at least to position four uh, and put the put the projector possibly behind it. But there's there's a lot of unknowns essentially in this list because again, I'm banking on what new generation models of different elements of this hardware may entail. So we'll see ultimately where Kaleidoscape ends up in 2024 but I'm hopeful 2023 was an incredible year for K. And I think there's no reason, like the table is set. They just have to keep driving forward, keep doing good stuff. And, and 2024 should be just as awesome, if not even more so. And so if I think about the theater that takes us basically to item number six, for me, item number six would be to starting to step up through my speaker migration plan. In the room right now, I have a trio of Focal IW LCR6s behind my screen. I have quad IW6s in the walls as my bed layer surrounds, and I have ICW6s in the ceiling overhead. The Focal lineup, though, has one more level, one more echelon to attain on the audio side, and that's that Focal Utopia in wall speaker. And when I conceived of buying the speakers that I did for the room, I, I already had a plan in mind where down the road, if I've got some more money to spend, I've got some money burning a hole in my pocket. Well, let's go ahead and pick up three Utopias for the LCRs behind the screen. We'll add another IW LCR6 to the three that came out. Now we'll use the IW LCR6 as the surrounds in the bed layer. And then we'd be pulling the IW6s out of the walls. We might as well put those up in the ceiling bigger, better speakers in every location and continuing to like basically step the room up. And if I ever get to a point where I've got all Utopias in the bed layer and the IW6s up in the ceiling, that would pretty much be Focal Endgame. So I am putting this at number six though, uh, as sweet as the Utopias are. And I'm sure, I, I'm, I'm sure that an IW LCR6 to Utopia should represent an upgrade much like the ABM70 to the 90 did a desirable upgrade uh, altogether. To me, this is ultimately still number six. The speakers as they are in the room, absolutely rock. The room sounds fantastic. It has all the, the volume and detail and clarity and all these things that I would like to have uh, in the space. So this is like an absolute want. We're talking like end game, end game uh, level of performance for the room as it is and as I have it right now. We'll see. I don't know if I'll get all the way through to actually exercising number six. It kind of really does depend on the channel and revenues and how much money I have, may have or may not have to play with. But in the spectra of things that I want to do uh, in the room in the long run, this would essentially represent uh, another piece of the upgrade migration, the upgrade evolution. And so ultimately it rounds out my list. I don't imagine I get any further than these six things in 2024. We'll see how far into this list that I'm able to get. If I'm e even able to make some good headway, get half or three quarters or so of it done, it's gonna be a banner year for the Techthusiasm space. The theater will be all that much better for it. Running awesome, looking awesome, sounding awesome. And we'll have a lot of fun along the way and I'll have a whole bunch of things to talk about. And this list doesn't even include other things that I would hope to be able to experience or experiment with in 2024 through my collaborations and my partners and so on to be able to maybe just try some different things. The stuff that I'm talking about here is the things that I'm really focused on to buy and own 
and have be like essentially the permanent base uh, element uh, of the Tecthusiasm home theater. So all bets are off on other things that may be able to come through here to demo and review and experience and comment on and discuss as well. So sound off in the comments. What do you think about my list? Am I, do, I, do I have a good list? Am I missing something? Do you feel that any of my, my priority order is out of whack? Give me your feedback. Give me your thoughts. Because, of course, everything is fluid. This is my outlook right now. Times and circumstances and realities and product announcements and everything else will certainly influence this as we go through the year. And the reality of, of product releases and economic situations and all of that kind of unveil themselves uh, in reality. So, uh, if you would, please do all that regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, share the video, hit the bell. Leave those comments for discussion. If you want to help me accomplish all this stuff in 2024, well, there's some ways to support the channel. Shop with my affiliates. That's really one of the best ways to do it. Make your Amazon purchases through me if you would. Audio advice if you're buying. Hefty major home theater gear. Or I have other partners that I can hook you up with and refer you to in ways that can help me meet these goals and give me all kinds of cool stuff to talk about. Thanks so much for watching. Come on back all through 2024 for a whole lot more home theater discussion and fun.